Hello, this is Junichiro Horikawa, and today I'm going to create a simple shelf that can be created using like CNC machines or laser cut. Uh, Alright, so let's start by creating some polygon and let's define the radius for this one. So I'm gonna create like a column like shelf. So let's say 500 as a <coughs> diameter. So let's divide this by 2. And, or maybe I can just use this 500 itself as a radius. Okay, and also let's also create an inner radius to create another hexagon, or maybe I want to change the side number as well. Okay. And now I want to rotate the outward curve which is this one with a <coughs> range let's define the total angle um, I would like to create some twisted columns so use the pi and let's create a sliders between 0 to 10 and created an angle series and let's also create a number of uh, plate okay now let's rotate this All right and let's also create a board between this curve and the curve right here which doesn't really rotate so I can just use duplicate graft and merge it together Boundary surface. Okay, there seems to be a problem. Okay, the number of items using this one and 10 is different, so I think I have to make it x plus 1. Right, now let's extrude these all together with some thickness that I could define, maybe let's say 20 okay then move them upward with a total height information so let's say the total height is around like 2000 maybe more and create a range to define the height same number used then place it right here okay I think I also need to make a craft like this Okay, now if I increase the number of values, maybe let's try to make it like 30 for maximum numbers. Okay, seems to work. And let's 
Maybe for this one, I can set the maximum to three. Or two. Let's increase the decimal. Right. Now it's the time to create some structural uh, brace inside. Uh, let's do that by retrieving a inner curve right here, which is this one. Why? Well, maybe I can explode it. Take a middle point by creating an evaluate length okay like this and then create a line that goes from point this point to go inside with some offset and that offset can be calculated probably using a value between these two values so maybe create a subtraction between these and multiply by by 0.5 okay and Let's also rotate this tangent vector by 90 degrees. Or maybe I can just use pi with 0.5. And then create a line SDL with a length that I calculated right here at the center from the center point okay now it's going inside inward so <clears throat> let's move it move it back to outward for half size to create a brilliant shape so I'm going to create a amplitude with this one and multiply this length by half the size being negative right, and let's extrude it to create a thickness same as this board so I can use this value right here okay okay bring it somewhere around here and use the tangent vector this time from this one to extrude so I'm going to create an ambient amplitude together with this 20 or thickness value then extrude the line right then I would need to move this back a half size to the Chantin direction so I can multiply this one by 0.5 again make it negative then move it alright now let's extrude this to Z direction to give a height now I might need to tweak the complete height a little bit because since I'm currently I'm using uh, so this will be the total height but actually I'm adding I have to add 20 which is the thick or 
which is the thickness of the board right here. So let me just subtract this one by 20 and be the connected to the range right here so that I can use this one directly as a total height. Okay. So let's bring this up to the right. Okay, now I can use this board together with these flat board to create a boolean shape. Okay, now let's flatten. And this is already flattened, but let's just make sure. Okay, so let's first create a boolean shape uh, with solid difference. This one and this one. Right now, let's check. Okay, looks good. Now, let's also create another boolean using solid um, difference, but setting this one as an A and this one as B. Okay, and finally, I can move this. It inward so that it will um, <coughs> jam it'll bite the board okay so I can move this and I think I can use this one but just making it negative all right oh no not this one not this one Probably this one. Oops, nope. Um, okay, maybe this one. So, oops. Uh, okay, how's this? Okay, well, this seems to work. Right, so. Okay, let's color this with different colors. Color these two with different colors. Swatch. Uh, with some colors, with some different colors. And this one, the, the flat board as well. Okay, so seems to work well. Okay, so after this, maybe I can lay out this in a plane. So <clears throat> let's try to do that as well. So that we can use this to cut the geometry. So what I can do, I can just, I will just use the simple method. First, retrieve the boundary box for both this geometry and this geometry. Explode the face or deconstruct the face and Calculate the area for each face and then look for the largest uh, one by sorting out. Okay. Get the largest. 
Okay, and let's get the uh, center point by using evaluate surface, connect it, and also make it reparameterized, and use construct point. Construct point. Point five. Okay, and then let's orient this geometry from a frame to a XY plane. Okay, that doesn't seem correct. That is because I, I think I need to graft it or flatten it, either one of it. Okay, now it seems like it's placed on the negative Z direction. Uh, mm, maybe I can just retrieve the the bottom surface out of this so instead of taking the area maybe I can retrieve wait but maybe I can just convert this surface itself into a plane Okay, uh, make it flatten. Mm. Okay, doesn't really look correct. Maybe this is still okay. <coughs> but maybe I can flip the normal flip the plane uh, there are no such thing to flip the plane maybe I can deconstruct the plane then construct back the plane construct plane using the same origins same x but use negative y okay now I can move this board Alley this force in x direction lay out on the ground so <clears throat> I can say well maybe first I can calculate the boundary bounding box uh, size maybe getting the box corners Okay, and then get the distance between the minimum min 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 and max min min. Okay, now I think I can use some um, list component to add those. A series of numbers together to create a uh, series of numbers maybe this one consecutive domains 
to create an additive domain. Right now, I can also, after creating this one, now currently I have 22, but in total I have 23 values. So, wait. First of all, I think I need to deconstruct the domain. Deconstruct domain. And and hmm. Let's retrieve the list right here and retrieve the last value from this list using list item merge them together or maybe I can just merge this with a value zero Okay, and then uh, move all those plate to X direction, just this one to X direction, but I think I also need to offset to X direction. So let's also calculate the total bounding box like this and calculate another distance and add all these numbers with this offset value Okay, let's make this flatten this one, this one, and right here. Okay, now it seems like I have some problem with these inter intersected. So I might need to use this one instead of zero. Let's try it. Okay, now that seems better. So maybe I can just skip adding this value. Yeah, or maybe I can just add a sum offset value which you can define by yourself okay okay now let's copy this color to use it for the horizontal board and for the vertical Let's just make this grouped out together. Okay. And for those vertical rods, I'm going to do a similar stuff that I did right here. So. I'll just copy some of the verb right here until right here 
to see if this works with these geometries. Okay, now it seems to have some problem right here. So let's see why. So after I have retrieved the normal direction. Let me just try to show this. Display. Okay, so it seems like the angle. Some of the angle for this frame looks a bit wrong. It's all perpendicular. Now, why is that? Okay. Okay, so that that is because I'm using boundary box as it is. So instead of just using boundary box, maybe I can just connect it directly. Okay, now. Let's see the result. Okay, looks better. So maybe for well, these one as well, I didn't need it to use bounding box, but I can just connect this one directly. This still works. And gives you a bit more clean result. Alright. So <clears throat> Let's get the box corner. And okay, I might want it to add. an offset to these so I'm going to create some values for the offsetting add it with these values okay now I can Calculate the distance for x direction for these ones. Add it together with this one. And use the similar things that I did right here. Maybe I can I can copy these part right here. Right. Somewhere around here. X and move this. the geometry which has been oriented this one okay and also move this to a z direction or y direction by calculating the distance between the minimum 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 and minimum maximum minimum this 
this one. Okay. Go to the Y direction. Like this. Okay, so that's it. Try to change the parameters to see the differences. Let's change the number of steps. Okay, seems to work. Change the thickness. height okay so seems to work Okay, so that's it to create a shelf which can be created using CNC or laser cut. Alright, so thank you.